This is an Algebra 1 sample question number 2. It says, let A represent a non-zero rational number. So I'm going to pause there and I'm going to think of a non-zero rational number. So rational numbers are numbers that can be represented by a fraction. So the number could be written as P over Q and it would still hold the same value. In this case, I'm going to choose A equals 3 because it could be written as 3 over 1, same thing as the number 3. Then the rest of the question says, and let B represent an irrational number. So what would an irrational number be? So you do need to know an example of rational versus irrational. So the easiest one is the square root of 2. The square root of 2 cannot be written as a fraction. It will never be something like a numerator divided by a denominator to e exactly equate to the square root of 2. So I do have it here, but I'll do it again just in case. If you ever have a calculator like this, you might have to do it backwards from what you think. But the square root of 2 is 1.41424, all of that, and it actually continues. So I'm going to put approximately, but only because I cannot um, continue. This calculator only had enough room for these amount of numbers, but it's actually supposed to keep on going. So that is an irrational number where there's no way I can build a fraction, some kind of numerator over denominator, to equate to that, not possible. And that's what makes it irrational. So let's take it step by step and do part A. It says which expression could represent a rational number? So remember, as we're doing these, we want rational numbers. All right, so let's do the very first one. So the very first one we have is um, the negative b. So negative b would be negative with the b inside. And don't forget that for b, we chose um, the square root of negative 2. So if you were to do negative times the square root of 2, that is the same thing as having negative square root of 2, which is still a negative, this time, irrational number. Still not allowed. Even if this number were negative, there's no fraction that would exactly equal it. All right, let's do the next one. So the next one, we have a plus b. So we have a plus b, and we're going to see what we get here. So your a was the number 3, and your b was the square root of 2. So if you have 3 plus the square root of 2, it could be just written like this. People wouldn't really mix those together because, again, 2 is irrational. And even if I took out my calculator, I'll show you here. There is the square root of 2 if I added 3. It would still be a number that continues forever. Remember, this is not a calculator question, so you would have to know that this still yields an irrational number. Okay, all they did was add 3 to it. It would be 3.14, um, 3.414214 continues. All right, now let's do a times b. So we have a times b, your a is going to be the number 3, your b is the square root of 2. If you multiply those numbers together, you get 3 square root 2. All right, so 3 square root 2 is actually irrational. I'll show you with the calculator. So let's do... 3 times 2 as a square root, and then put equals. Uh, let me do it the opposite way just to make sure I did this right. The square root of 2 times 3, because multiplication is commutative, I could do it in each order. And yes, we were right. The answer would be 4.242641 continued. You can kind of tell which ones are not going to be a perfectly um, rational number. Once you have the decimals and you can see it's going on forever, you definitely don't have a rational number. 
So let's try b squared. So for b squared, you just have to take b and square it. Inside of that, I'm going to put the square root of 2. So the square root of 2 squared, there's two ways of doing it. You could write it as the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. So the square root of 2 twice. So because um, exponents mean you're multiplying the same value how many times the exponent is. So in this case, that's why I wrote it two times. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is actually the square root of 4. When you have square root times square root, you're allowed to multiply the insides. And your final answer would be just the number 2, which is rational, which means that D is our correct answer. The other way of doing it is if you focus right here, if you ever have the square root also with a squared, your answer would just be the number 2 because square root cancels squared and vice versa. So that's called simplifying. And don't forget the other way I taught you where you write it twice because that was your exponent. Square root can multiply with square root, so you would just multiply the insides, and then the square root of 4 is actually 2. All right, so that is how you answer part A. And now we have the other version down here, the other question. It says, consider a quadratic equation with integer, integer coefficients and two distinct zeros. If one zero is irrational, which statement is true about the other zero? So that is a little confusing, but the answer is that if you have an irrational zero, so if one zero is irrational, then the other zero must also be irrational. And I will show you what I mean. So the way I'm going to show you how I mean is first give you the theorem and then give you an example. So there's something called the irrational conjugate theorem. You might have seen it in action and not known what it's called. But basically, let's say your answer is, I'm just being uh, very simple here, x minus um, the square root of 3. Then you also have x plus the square root of 3. So you're going to have something like that. So I'm going to show you with an example. And the example that we're going to use is, for example, x squared and then let's have plus um, 7x minus 2. So let's say that is our example. And we're going to say it's equated to 0 just to get the ball rolling. So if that is your answer, your question, then we have an A, a B, and a C. So your A would be 1 your b would be 7, and your c would be negative 2. Then you can do the quadratic formula. So the goal of this question is not to make you do the quadratic formula. It's just to make you see why you would have two answers, two answers, so this would be answer number 1 and answer number 2, where both of them are irrational. So if I were to plug it in, you get negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1. So if you were to just do the inside, because we're not here to review quadratic formula, we're just here to prove something, um, negative 7 squared, I mean, sorry, 7 squared is 49. 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. So you have negative 7 plus or minus 49 minus 8. Then if you do that one more time, you'll have negative 7 plus or minus, condense the inside, 49 minus 8 is 41. So from here, we have two answers. This represents two answers, and your two answers are 
negative 7 plus. So I'll show you here. Let me just make some space. So negative 7 plus the square root of 41 divided by 2. Negative 7 minus the square root of 41 divided by 2. And you can see that the square root of 41 is not going to be a simple rational number. So that means that um, I just represented two numbers that are going to be not so pretty answers. It's going to be negative 7 plus a long decimal divided by 2 as your final answer. And the other answer was going to be negative 7 minus the decimal answer then divided by 2. And so from the plus or minus symbol, you can tell that if you have an irrational answer, you must the other answer must also be irrational. And don't forget that quadratic means you should have two answers. It's always x squared or something x squared. And that's how you tackle number two.